And commitment is something that is taken very seriously by the Lord and also by the world. Uh, Commitment is something that each and every one of us is familiar with. Perhaps, Perhaps at times in our life we run from it. And perhaps we learn to be those that that commit our way to the right way. You know, in Proverbs 16, at verse 3, let's, let's turn to the book of Proverbs as we begin uh, thinking about this here today. Proverbs 16. Proverbs 16 at verse 3 is where we're going to be. So Proverbs 16 at verse 3 says, Commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. An interesting scripture. Let's go a little bit further in Proverbs, and and Proverbs 19, and at verse 21. Proverbs 19, and at verse 21 says, There are many plans in a man's heart. Nevertheless, the Lord's counsel will stand. You know, as as we look back there at Proverbs 16, and at verse 3, where we were just a few moments ago, you know, we read that, commit your works to the Lord and your thoughts will be established. Well, that, that, may, that may be something that if we are not thinking properly and not thinking in the context of the rest of the scriptures, uh, we might think, well, the Lord wants me to have everything that I want. The Lord wants me to choose the way. The Lord wants me to make the the choices. But when we look a little bit further and we understand in, in, in the very same book and a, a few uh, chapters later in verse 21, we get a little bit more of the picture there. It says, there are many plans in a man's heart. Again, nevertheless, the Lord's counsel is the Lord's counsel that will stand. You know, when the, the, Lord, <clears throat> the Lord makes the way, and if we are <clears throat> those that that seek after him, then the thoughts that we have and the plans that we have in our head and our minds, they're going to be those that line up with the Lord's will because we are going to be those that are seeking after him. You know, when we we set out in our lives, we come to a sign like this many times, whether, you know, just figuratively in our our lives, we come to a, a sign where there's the wrong way and I think I mentioned it on Thursday night uh, that I had recently heard uh, a preacher speak on this subject, and he said, "You know, there's there's clearly a, a a way that will just you know it's going to work out. You know that if you do this, it's the safe bet. You know, it's it's a it's a safe it, it, it's it's a safe thing to make preparations before you go on a trip." You know that if you change the oil and you check the car out and you put new tires on it and you check the air pressure in those tires before you leave and you do all of these things, you know that that's that's something that is going to do good. That's something that is not going to hurt you. You know that there's another way that that might work out. It might work out, but there, there are these pitfalls that you could fall into along the way. There are these... Uh, areas that are maybe not safe. So why would you go down that path? Why would you go down that that way that clearly could cause you trouble? And then there's clearly a way that is just the wrong way. If you stop and and look and, and think about it for a moment, you know that this is just not the way that I should be going. You know, we need to be those that commit our way to the Lord. Understanding that it doesn't matter uh, what I want. It doesn't matter what, what my way would be. But what matters is that the Lord establishes this way. That the Lord is the one who sets our steps in place. You know, our, if we want our plans to be established again, uh, our plans need to be those of the Lord because it's his way that is going to stand his purpose is going to stand and that's the safe way you know that that's not going to fail you know as we look around us we have many young children 
uh, several young children with us here this morning. And as we bring them up in the care and admonition of the Lord, there's, there's right ways and, and wrong ways. You know, maybe perhaps as you've, as you've been parenting for a while, you've figured out what works uh, for, for this child versus the other. You know, in, in my family, I have, I have one that uh, seems to respond really well if you take things away from him, like his video games. Uh, that, that would be the thing that would just be crushing uh, uh, in, his, in his mind. But uh, in, in others, uh, it's not quite the same, the same way. Uh, as we think about what is the right way to bring up our children, it's in the care and admonition of the Lord. It's, it's in exposing them to the scriptures and not just, yep, there's the Bible on the shelf. And yep, there's we're going to go to we're going to go to church today. But actually teaching them the scriptures, actually living those out, and showing that you can be a Christian in this day and in this age, and be successful at it. That you can stand up against those things that would drag you away from the Lord. There's. Again, a wrong way, my way, and then there's the right way. We have to be certain of that. And, and of course, when we uh, make these decisions, uh, there might come some ridicule along the way. We have, to, we have to have our thick skin on, if you will. We have to realize that uh, the Lord's be, being pleasing in the sight of the Lord is so much more important than being pleasing in the sight of of other people, you know, I can't count the the number of times that that uh, people have looked at me sideways when when I've said that you know we're we're going to pick so and so up on Saturday night so they can be there for Sunday morning service, and you get the thing, you get the comments like, "Won't do, do you really need to do that?" and "Won't won't God understand that we're camping and we're not going to get back until such and such a time?" You know, we, we have to make those commitments. We have to seek the Lord first in all that we do. Again, as we, as we look into the book of Proverbs, uh, let, let's go back to Proverbs chapter 14. And at verse 12, we see this, this idea of a way that seems right. Proverbs 14 at verse 12 says, There is a way that seems right to a man, but its end is the way of death. Now, how many times have you been wrong in, in picking a way in your life? Whether that be a choice that you made that you thought certainly was going to, to that you thought that was going to work out well for you, and then in the end it didn't. Or you, on, on a trip, you picked a road and said, I'm going to go down this road because I think it's going to go in the right direction. And you found out that it didn't. You found out that it curved another way. But what would have been the way to find out you know, where that road went? It would have been to look at the road map. It would have been to look at the GPS. You know, to, in, in our culture today, we have, we have GPS in our cars and on our phones and so on. But in the old days, you, you'd unfold a map. I think, I think Ed mentioned a triptych earlier in Bible study. You open that up and find out what is the right way to go. Again, we can't trust our own hearts. And that's one of the first things that we have to come to grips with. Is that, is that our hearts will lead us astray. You know, the first step is recognizing that we have that problem. That heart problem. A problem of misguided free will. You know, God gave us free will. He wants us to choose him. He wants us to seek after him. And there are all kinds of things that will misguide us along the way. You know, there's popular culture. There are movies and books that uh, are by design so that we'll read them and watch them. They're designed to be things that tug at our heartstrings. Well, isn't that, isn't that sweet? It, it, that that uh, this person 
is walking forward in their life because grandma wanted them to do this. Uh, or whatever the, whatever the storyline might be that tugs at our heartstrings. You know, we, we, we get enthralled with those stories. But realize, not realizing sometimes that uh, our heart can lead us astray. You know, if we have a problem, you know, the, the statement of the first step being recognizing that you have a problem, you know, that's kind of stolen from, you know, Alcoholics Anonymous and, and any other multi-step programs that, that help people to get away from a habit or an addiction. And uh, you might say that as human beings, we have a habit of making decisions with our heart, of making decisions with our own will. Uh, being at the forefront of those things, but realizing that that can be misguided, that we have to have our heart on the right path, that if we have our heart full of the word of God, then we have some direction in which we can go. Then our heart will be attuned to the way of the Lord. Again, we must commit our way to the Lord. You know, when, when we think about commitment, you know, there are things that we must be or should be committed to. Let's go over to the book of Romans in the New Testament. We'll go over to the book of Romans and we'll go to chapter 12 in the book of Romans and then the first two verses. Romans chapter 12, the first two verses. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. You know, it is just simply our reasonable service. When we realize that Jesus is. If you are sitting here today and you understand that Jesus is the Son of the living God, you have that understanding in your mind. And you, you know that. You believe that. If that's true, then the next logical step would be to do everything that he's commanded. That we commit ourselves to him knowing that he is going to expect that we live by his word. That he is going to be displeased with those that do their own thing. That go off and uh, decide to be absent from the Lord because other things have become more important in their lives. You know, you might uh, sit and ask yourself, uh, when's the last time I actually cracked open my Bible during the week? When's the last time that I actually shared the scriptures or talked about the scriptures, for that matter, with my family or my friends? You know, there are things that we should be committed to. You know, of course, service to the Lord. You know, we absolutely, it is our reasonable service. If we if we believe that he is, then we're going to want to serve him. We're going to want to serve him not because we're cowering in fear and we have to do what he says, but because we love him and we understand what he's done for us. And we want to be with him. You know, one of the scariest things I've, I've heard, and I know I've mentioned this before, is that sometimes people will, uh, I think half-jokingly say, not really realizing the depth of this statement, that they would rather be in hell because that's where all their friends are going to be. Well, that may be a true statement uh, if, you, if you know your friends and know that, know that they don't live according to the, to the uh, will of the Lord. But uh, how scary is that? How, think about what that means and what you're giving up and what you're choosing to do. Not not serving the Lord and having a, an eternity that is full of comfort and peace and love. But to be in a place, to willingly go to a place of torment and trouble. And if you think this world is troublesome, 
and, and it is. And life can be hard here on this earth. But if you think this is bad, just read the scriptures as it pertains to as it pertains to hell and what that will look like and what that will be. You know, there are, again, things that we should be committed to and service to the Lord is absolutely one of them. <clears throat> Evangelism and sharing the truth with others. If you're sitting here today and you're a Christian and you've put on Christ in baptism, then there should be nothing more important in your life. And I'm speaking for myself too. There should be nothing more important in my life than sharing the gospel with others because that's what the Lord did when he was here on this earth he was about his father's business he wasn't about the next shiny thing he wasn't uh, going to uh, social events to be social uh, although I would imagine that he was a personable person that he got along with others as, as well as, as could be given the circumstances and that and that he was a kind and loving person that was easy to talk to knowing the Lord as we can from the scriptures but uh, he was out there doing the Lord's uh, his father's will he was out there uh, seeking those that would follow him and that's the same thing that we should find ourselves busy doing in our daily lives as Christians now of course, you know, we, we, we have to go to work. We have to uh, abide by certain rules. And maybe in some places it's, you know, it's not the time to speak of uh, the scriptures. In the middle of the work day, when some, if you're a doctor or a nurse and somebody is, is uh, having issues with uh, their health and you need to tend to that right then and there, you know, of course, maybe, maybe that's not the time you're going to evangelize, but, but in your actions and in your example throughout the day, people can know that you're different. As we talked about in the Bible study this morning, we're reading the scripture that speaks of, that speaks of uh, salt having lost its flavor and uh, you know, how can it be reseasoned? And we talked about how uh, salt is noticeable when you add it to a food it's noticeable well as christians we are supposed to be you know the those that change the flavor of the world around us we should be those that are noticeable in that regard that we're different that when people are around us when they speak to us that we speak differently and when that is noticed and we get their we get their trust because they know that we're a trustworthy person and we can start to speak to them a little bit more deeply about the scriptures we can speak to them about christ and about that hope that we have after this life is over we might be able to speak to them about how we can be at peace when all of the wars and troubles and sickness and illness and death is going on around us in the world that might be the thing that just tastes different to to those around us that that we have that peace that passes all understanding how can you be so calm well there's a good there's a good opportunity to speak about why you have that peace you know, worship is another thing that you know that we should be committed to you know in in the Lord's church, you know, make no mistake, he's commanded that we come together like we have today. And I hope that each and every one here is here because they want to be here to worship our Lord and Savior. Not out of some, some fearful command, which again, it is a command. And we are to be fearful of the Lord. But again, as I've mentioned before, it's not a cowering fear. But it's an understanding of who he is. It's an understanding of what it means or what it will mean to stand before him in judgment. And because we understand who he is and that he loves us and that he's given us this opportunity that he sent his son to die for our sins, that we want to be here, that we want to do the things that he's asked us to. You know, again, we have free will. 
We don't have to uh, for this period of time as we exist. But because the Lord wants us to, and we love him, we want to be in worship. We want to be there uh, whenever we can. You know, and it, whether, whether it's a comfortable thought or not, I remember being told this at one point in my life, that, uh, you know, big, big surprise as a teenager, I had trouble getting up in the morning. I would get up in the morning when the alarm went off or when my mom would bang on the door and after she sufficiently yelled at me to get up out of bed, I'd get up out of bed and I'd go downstairs and I'd go in the bathroom and turn the water on and lay down on the floor and go back to sleep. And uh, then she'd bang on that door and I, I'm getting ready, I'm getting ready. I had that issue of not getting up. And there's a couple times where I missed things that I was supposed to be at. And I had a, a, a man... Uh, a leader in a, a group that I was uh, Boy Scouts. Uh, he told me one time, he's like, you know, if it's important to you, you'd get up. And I thought, well, that's not fair. He doesn't understand. I'm tired. <laughs> I was up late and I'm tired. And, and that's just not a fair characterization of what was going on right there. But the older I get, the more I realize just how right he was. You know, if, if something is important to us, we make provision for us, for it. We, we make sure that uh, it takes a prominent place in our lives. We give time to, to that thing. And worship is just one of those things. Evangelism, another. If it's important to us, we'll make it happen. Again, study. You know, again, as we uh, ask ourselves, you know, when's the last time I cracked my Bible open and, and studied it? You know, and study involves a little bit more than just reading it. But reading it and thinking about the concepts within it. Uh, when you read the scriptures, and as you, if you read long enough, you'll come across something that'll, that'll trip a thought that leads you back to another point in the scriptures. And you think, oh, well, that's interesting how that connects. And then you start digging into that connection and that leads you to another connection. And before you know it, you're looking throughout the scriptures and you're studying a concept and growing more and more knowledgeable in the scriptures. It just takes time. Uh, perhaps I mentioned recently, I try not to reuse examples too often, but uh, I was talking to the wife of an older preacher one time and commenting on just how instant he was with the scriptures and you know, how does he do that? How does he keep all of that in his mind and how does it just come out? And she said, well, it's taken him a very long time to do that. You know, whatever, uh, he's in his 80s and started preaching when he, in his 20s. Uh, so talking 60 some years of study to become that instant and so that makes me feel a little bit better about my feeble mind but uh, wherever and however our abilities can grow uh, we have to put time into it we have to commit ourselves to it the bible is not going to just creep its way into our minds on its own we have to put it in there you know, i had a uh, middle school uh, teacher that used to say, you know, you're not going to learn this thing out of, from osmosis. You can't just sleep on your book and then just expect the information to find its way into your brain. And, and that was true as well. You know, it, edifying our brother is another thing that we should be committed to. And then there are many more things that we could put in this list. These are just a few that I thought of as I was thinking about these things. And we need to be committed to one another. We need to be those that are, are committed just as we are a family, as we are in Christ. You know, we become committed to our family that lives in our house. You know, we do certain things that allow that household to operate. You know, somebody in your house is so committed that they go to the grocery store. Somebody in your house is so committed that they get up and go to work so that they can make a living so that there may be some things on the table. Somebody is so committed that they do the cleaning and the dishes and so on. You know, we have to make those commitments in our lives. 
uh, one of the, you know, very simply, if you're committed to a family or to anything, is you show up. You know, what does commitment look like? It looks like being there. You know, if we're in a, if we're a part of a family, and we decide that, well, I'll just show up every so often. I'll walk in the door every couple of months and stay there for an hour or so and leave again. And, and what kind of commitment would that be? What kind of commitment uh, does that show? If you have a job, and of course, when you interview for the job, many times they'll look for a person who's going to be committed to that, to that position, and they'll ask questions that try to ferret that out. Are you going to be one who shows up to work? I hired a guy one time at the driving school. He, he had retired from a company, and he, he spent an awful long time in the interview telling me about how he never missed a day of work, how he shows up and he's always there. And so I hired him, and he never showed up. <laughs> he called off all the time. Uh, you know, he had all of the things that looked good there, but, but he just didn't show up. That wasn't commitment. You know, I, that didn't work out. You know, when we say we're committed to something, we show up, we put our effort into it, we make sure that we actually are committed. You know, if, if we stand before the Lord today and we have to answer for our actions here on this earth, will the Lord look at us and, and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant? Will he believe that you've been committed to him or will he think otherwise? It's something for us to think about as we, as we move forward in our lives. You know, what does commitment look like? Would, would I be happy uh, with that same sort of commitment from my spouse? Would I be happy with that same sort of commitment from an employee or even a friend? We need to commit our way to the Lord. The right way, of course, is in Christ. If you turn with me to John 14 and at verse 6, John 14 at verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. There's that one way. There's that right way. The religious world today is confusing. The religious world today tells us that there are many ways and that it doesn't matter what you do, just love Jesus. They'll tell you that you can attend any church, that they're all the same, that it doesn't matter what you do, just love Jesus and he loves you. You know, that's what I remember hearing growing up in, in denominations. I remember hearing that and, and believing that. And then as I grew older, I remember seeing a lot of the hypocrisy that took place uh, around me from those same people that uh, claimed to love Jesus. And then it started to, to, to grate the wrong way uh, against me, and I started to doubt. And you start to think about, well, why, you know, what's the use of this? Because these people still do all of these things. You know, the right way is in Christ. And, and in order to find out if you're in Christ, you need to look into the scriptures. That's something that you, won't, you don't see often in the religious world. You, you have a guy standing up like me who speaks to a crowd and they believe him. And I hope that you go and look to make sure the things that I'm telling you can be found in the scriptures. I hope you're following along and, and taking notes and thinking about these things and Am I telling you the truth? Yeah, we, we need to look at those things. You know, the right way is in Christ, and you can only find Christ by looking into his word and seeing if what you're doing matches up with what he said. You know, this, this way leads to a future and a hope. If you, you look back to Jeremiah chapter 29, 
Jeremiah 29 at verse 11 says, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Now that's what the Lord has always wanted for his people. He created mankind and they had a future. They had a hope. They used their free will, exercised that free will to separate themselves from the Lord. And he's done everything ever since to get us back. He's given us a path, a way that we can commit to that leads to him, that brings us back into the fold, that gives us that peace, that hope in Christ. So as we bring this lesson to a close, we simply ask the question, are you committed to Christ? Can you honestly say that you're committed to Christ? And, and if you need uh, the prayers of the saints that you might be stronger, then that's what we're here for. If you need support, again, that's why we have the local assembly of the Lord's saints. We can come together and be a support one to another. We can help out one another where where we fall short we can be those that work together to make sure that each and every one of us can be found to be committed to the lord are you here today and you're outside of christ is this the first that you're hearing of of these things do you, would you like to study more you know, we understand from Romans 10 of verse 17 that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. If you're at that point, you, you believe that he is, you believe that Christ is the son of the living God, then just like in Acts chapter 8, when the Ethiopian, Ethiopian eunuch uh, came to that understanding, he believed he was willing to repent of his sins and turn away from those and he was baptized for the remission of his sins. We have the same example with the Philippian jailer. We have the same example with those in Acts chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. We have those that came to the knowledge of who Christ is. Knowing that, they wanted to know what must they do. They repented and were baptized for the remission of sins. That very same thing can be done here today. We have the waters ready behind me here. Uh, if you need to put on Christ, if you need the prayers of the saints, please let that be known. Please come forward as we stand and sing.